Great. I think we got everything worked out. First, we want to welcome everyone. We apologize for the technical difficulties. It appears there's some issues between Zoom and Facebook Live, but we'll go ahead and start recording this uh, conversation. If there are any specific questions, please email unites at csd.org. Now, let me introduce myself. I'm Kriston, Kriston Pumphrey. I'm involved at CSD as in the engagement team. We're talking with Sasha Panapa, our new CSD Unites Director. Welcome. Thank you, Kriston. I'm excited to be here with you. Yes, same. We're thrilled to have you with us. Unfortunately, the situation today with the spread and pandemic of COVID-19 has been quite hard. We have full confidence with you on the board and the new initiatives, the micro grant that we have come out with, that is such a huge benefit to our community. It's, that's the whole reason why we're here to have this FAQ webinar. So could you explain a little bit more about the benefits for this micro grant, who can apply, um, what the restrictions are, and so on and so forth. First, why don't you tell us about yourself and why you feel this is such an important initiative? Thank you, Kristan. It really is a pleasure to be here. Right now, the COVID-19 pandemic has, has affected everyone worldwide. I live in New York City and we have so many who have uh, passed. The numbers of cases have increased. People are being laid off from work. And we're just seeing just a, such a huge impact. Where are you right now? I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Yes, and it's the same here. Yeah, just the spread has been quite hard. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing in our community. It's been definitely impacted and in the deaf community. Um, their health, their, their jobs, employment. And CSD want, wanted to create this Unites Foundation for providing support to organizations, marginalized organizations and people who are underserved in the population. We wanted to sponsor the ability to help in those areas. Right now, it's the right time for us to provide this during the pandemic. We decided to specifically create the micro grant for an emergency fund to help with those organizations. Perfect. So for the foundation, it will focus on sponsoring emergency responses to organizations related to COVID-19. Do you mind telling me a little bit about who it specifically um, applies to and who can apply for this grant? Yes, this is for deaf organ and hard of hearing organizations that have a 501c3, the uh, a IRS granted 501c3. If you don't have a 501c3, then you can prov sp uh, partner with a 501c3 entity and apply. That's nice that to give some flexibility for those who not all deaf organizations may have a 501c3. So if that comes up, they'd be able to partner with someone, right? So in accordance to this grant, obviously it focuses on 501c3 nonprofit organizations. What about families and individuals? Quite a few of them have been impacted by COVID-19, maybe laid off from work. Can you explain uh, if that applies? No, this micro grant doesn't uh, apply to families or individuals directly. But indirectly, if you are someone who uh, is struggling with resources, money, layoffs. Um, after this, we'll go ahead and post where you can find resources and go ahead and contact the ASL Now COVID-19 hotline. And that hotline and then other resources will be listed in the comments after this. But this specific resource that we're talking about is for COVID-19 assistance for organizations 
applying for our grant. I also wanted to add a 501c3 who provides support to the community. Um, maybe they have an organization, as an organization, they have an idea to help relieve the pandemic of COVID-19. And maybe there's deaf and hard of hearing who have been oppressed and marginalized in this area. So maybe it's a deaf with uh, additional disabilities or other deaf and hard of hearing individuals. You have reason to apply for this grant um, because you're helping a marginalized deaf or hard of hearing individual. Is there a time limit? Uh, that I definitely think this is very important to, to uh, participate in this. So suppose the organization itself hosts an event. Can they apply for this grant or is that different? Yeah, this wouldn't apply to that case. So if you're considering sponsorship of an event, this wouldn't work for that. This is a micro grant, which means we have uh, amounts to be able to put towards projects, proposals related to the deaf and hard of hearing community. If it's a one-time event that you're hosting, this grant wouldn't be the right area for you to apply for. So suppose an organization works with the deaf, but also with the hearing community. For example, maybe there's a shelter and they have hearing and deaf individuals, will they be able to still apply for something like this? That's a great question, Kristan. Yes, you can. You see, if you can go ahead and apply, and if we do award that grant, we will sponsor, sponsor only those specific individuals. There's all sorts of different community services, but these funds will be specific for those deaf individuals within your organization. Sasha, that's great clarification to understand the difference there. Yeah, if you're a disability organization or a college or a program that serves multiple individuals and disabilities, we can provide support as long as you put those funds towards the deaf and hard of hearing individuals in your organization. Now, suppose an organization receives the funds um, or, or puts in a proposal can they have two or three proposals for other projects that they have? You know, Kristan, we get that question quite a lot. Uh, we receive a lot of proposals and there are so many different ideas and organizations, wonderful ideas and organizations that are proposed. But just because you submit a proposal doesn't mean we will sponsor all of them. Please send us all your ideas and your proposals and we'll let you know if you're awarded that or not. Sasha, that's good to know because with the different organizations, they want to do um, one idea and, and see if that'll work and work with other organizations to try and partner because they'll have certain skills and resources that they can combine and partner with each other. So that's good that they have that flexibility um, to see whether or not it would work. Because right now, it's, uh, these are un, this is unprecedented times right now. So they're not sure exactly what's going on in the future. So yeah, Kristan, they, please, we want everyone to send their proposals and we'll look at that. Our goal is to try and sponsor as many community members as we can within these organizations. Because like you said, these are unprecedented times and in the foreseeable future, there's a lot of questions that are unknown. So we're just hoping to support these organizations to do the great work that they do. You know, now it's, it's, uh, with April 9th next week on the 15th, would you, would you explain that date and how everything's working? Yes. After this, we'll post the application link. So people are able to click it and apply applicants need to submit those before April 15th. Unites Foundation will take a look at those applications and let, let you know who's awarded those uh, the micro grants. That'll be about the 25th that we submit the responses. And May 1st, we'll be able to move forward. 
So I was in organizations and, and uh, with money being tight now during this pandemic, we're trying to provide you with that support as soon as possible. So April 15th is the due date. Money will be available May 1st. So you'll decide and announce when? April 25th. Okay, 15th, 25th, and the 1st. Great. Yes. Now I'm curious, Sasha. Suppose an organization uh, needs a response to a situation right now. They don't have a lot of resources, um, a lot of expenditures right now because of what's going on. And they're trying to get through things because time is, is really sensitive. So um, when does the next funding cycle and its priority work? You mean for the rec retroactive spending? Yes, sorry, that's what I meant. Retroactive spending, how does that work? We as a foundation agreed that we would consider, consider retroactive funding, but your expenses that come up must be a result of COVID-19 relief. So if you're doing expenditures for other issues, that won't work. But if it's a result of COVID-19 relief, then that would work. So before, like, so there's January, December, February, that won't work. But after March 1st till the awarded date. So if the goal is to have the funds awarded May 1st, then any expenses that appear between March 1st and May 1st, we will consider uh, covering that that will be a retroactive portion of that micro grant. Now applicants, you must um, provide receipts, sponsors, proof, everything along those lines related to those expenses. Sasha, thank, for, thank you for clarifying that. Really, we wanna thank you for taking the time to, to lead this as the director of the foundation. It's such a big need in our community and there's so many um, needs out there. And it's so great that this is specific to deaf resources. Ex exactly. Thank you so much for giving me the time to explain the, the grant. And um, we just wanna encourage people to partner, get together to help our community and help in any way they can. I know right now it's a difficult time I know before we could provide services in person, you'd come into like my office or into a home and, and come visit person to person. But now with COVID-19, we have to resort to virtual um, connections and, and that's a transition. That can be overwhelming with internet and technology and how to access and communicate with clients and uh, all over the world. So I'm hoping that this, these funds can help reduce the stress and help give you the resources needed so that those funds can transfer from, help you transfer from a physical presence to an online presence. And maybe include online costs, um, equipment, iPads, things like that in the application. I know that will, that can definitely help your organization. So go ahead, send your proposals in and explain the details of your idea and put that into your proposal. Because again, Everything used to be in person and now we're transitioning to this online presence so that you're able to work with your people. So we want to help with that. You know, that leads to one more question I thought of Victor or uh, Sasha. So suppose an organization applies and they're hoping to get those funds. Can they also pursue, pursue other funds to help cover the expanding program that they have? I'm wondering, you know, or can they only do the Unites Foundation? I'm wondering. Oh, no. Kristan, we, we hope you apply for various funds for your organization. We're not sure how long COVID-19 will affect the world population. So with all the fund streams being affected and resources being affected, affected we've seen other states who have so many needs and and please contact us for being able to get awarded funds for resources and other types of funds other than us as well please um i'd be happy to share a list of other resources 
it's, it's always best to get as many funds to be able to support your organization members. So, so I think I've answered your question, but if you want to apply for funding, but you're not focused on COVID-19 right now, it's, maybe it's not a priority or you haven't been effective in your organization or you have other ideas um, for other initiatives outside of COVID-19 relief, our, once this funding cycle is done, in uh, the next um, spring and fall, we'll have the next cycle for funding that you can submit your proposals on other areas other than COVID-19. So if you envision to support marginalized community within the deaf community and hard of hearing communities, then the next funding cycle would be a great time for you to submit your proposal for 2020. Great, Sasha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kristan. I appreciate talking with you and look forward to seeing how this progresses. And uh, it's time for our community to come together, think outside the box, work together, support each other, and we can get through this. Kristan, thanks for taking the time to talk. I appreciate it. Thanks. Take care, Sasha. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.